Hey everyone, on this episode of Cutting Through the Noise, we will be discussing the Traction Channel trade shows. Today, rather than providing a definition on the Traction Channel, I will instead be sharing my screen to give a quick tutorial on how to use geofencing or geotargeting to effectively market to trade show attendees. Here at Pentler Group, we are big advocates of geofencing strategies. For those unfamiliar with the term, geofencing essentially is the ability to target ads to an audience within a specific location or boundary. This can refer to targeting audiences by state, city, region, zip code, address, and even latitude and longitude. For many of our clients, we have actually found success achieving different objectives using this method of geofencing. In the past, we've used geofencing to target locals within a one mile radius of specific locations to inform them of events going on, such as fundraising events or even a pop-up sale. We've even found success in targeting addresses of event centers to boost awareness and drive foot traffic to our clients running booths at either conferences or trade shows. So let's walk through the steps of geofencing. For this example, I will use our agency account to create a campaign targeting the attendees of a fake conference. Let's call it the Missoula Marketing Conference and it will take place at the University of Montana. Okay, so first things first, uh, we'll have to go ahead and go create a new campaign and choose our objective for it. Uh, usually with um, these kind of type of campaigns, I usually like to go with either a traffic objective or an engagement. Um, engagement's great if you are trying to geofence ahead of time and you have like a Facebook event going on, um, then this event responses is really cool to like test out. Uh, basically an event response is just trying to push people to make, take some sort of action on your Facebook event, whether that's, you know, get them to become interested in it or at least drive them to a page that they can learn more about the event. But I think for this example, I'm gonna go ahead and just stick with traffic. Uh, since we're gonna go ahead and target um, audiences at the conference and get people to our booth, I also want to go ahead and drive people from the ads to go to our web page so they can learn a little bit more about us. So I'll go ahead and name this campaign. I'll call it 2019. We'll say it's Geofence Marketing Conference. I usually like to stick with the year and then just kind of what the objective of the campaign is. I'm also going to go ahead and just do a lifetime budget for this hypothetical event, I'm going to say that it goes for two days, and so I only want to spend a max budget of $100 for those two days. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and work on the ad set part, and this is actually where we'll be uh, implementing the geofencing strategies in order to target our audience. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and give this a quick name. I'm just going to name it Missoula Marketing Conference. And we'll go ahead and scroll down to the audience section. So here you can see that um, Facebook ads has defaulted it to the United States. Um, that's something I'm going to want to go ahead and change because that's far too broad. So I'm going to just go ahead and type in Missoula, Montana. And so you see that you can go ahead and target within a radius. So they give you an option between 10 to 50 miles, which given how small Missoula is, this actually encompasses like the whole town. So I know I don't want to do that because it's too broad. That's about 80,000 people according to this audience size estimator. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get the actual address. So let's go to Google Maps and I will go ahead and type in the University of Montana. Select it. And I will go ahead and take this address and go ahead and paste it straight into the search bar. So now it'll give you, it'll default to 10 miles, but it'll go ahead and give you a range from one mile radius all the way up to 50. So I definitely want to go down to one mile and just get that one area. So once that's been selected, now I know that I can get everybody within this one mile radius. And if I wanted to, I can go ahead and adjust the age. So say maybe it's only people from ages 23 up to 50. I can go ahead and change that. I can target just men or women, but you just want to make sure you keep in mind this audience size estimator. So see, it says about 15,000 people or who people I could hopefully reach. Another thing to consider um, is that if your event or anything else that you're trying to uh, geofence happens to occur at different locations, I can actually go in and type another address as well. So let's say I want to go ahead and uh, target the Missoula Fairgrounds because there's a partner event going on there. So I'll do the same thing as I did before. I'll just go ahead and grab the address from Google Maps. 
and I'll copy it, paste it in there, and again adjust that radius to one mile. And now we see we can target people in both these locations. So this now brings it up to about 30,000 people. But for the sake of this example, I'm just going to go ahead and stick with the one. Just make sure that you spend some time playing around with this feature in Facebook. It's very powerful, the fact that you're able to adjust based off of people who live there, people that have recently been in the area, they're traveling through, or anybody. Um, there's also this add locations in bulk, which I've personally found to be beneficial if I am working with uh, email addresses or any other kind of information that I have that extends to more than like five or ten locations. I can actually keep all that information in a CSV file and then um, upload it into Facebook. So, so for example, if I have anything that's upwards of 50 postal codes and I don't want to type all those in, I could, or I could also go here, upload the file, and then Facebook will go ahead and match those locations. And once that's done, it'll actually bulk upload. So that's a nice little quick tip. So definitely spend some time looking at this. So now that I have this like these parameters set, I'm going to go ahead and go down here. Um, another thing to consider is this detailed targeting that's just based off of any interests. So people that follow certain pages or let's say for this example, I want to find people that are small business owners that are attending this marketing conference. I can type in that and see what it suggests. So for instance, there's behavior. So I could consider doing that. Typically with this kind of objective for the campaign, the fact that I'm trying to do more of awareness and just target anybody that's in that area, I'm just going to go ahead and leave it broad so I can keep getting anybody that passes through. So now I'll go ahead and down here. Um, when it comes to placements, that's really up to your preference. I usually like to go ahead and edit the placements. I feel like with editing the placements, I have a little bit more control over the cost of everything and that people are seeing the ads where I want them to see it. And last, we'll look at the optimization and spending controls. So for this, since I really want to reach as many people as I can within that radius, I'm going to go ahead and switch this to impressions. So this is going to deliver it to um, people in that radius as many times as possible. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, change the schedule that I want the ads to run and just put it around the conference times. So let's say for this example that the conference starts on November 4th at 8 a.m., um, I'm actually going to go ahead and change that to 7.30, so we'll have it start going, you know, as people are getting there and arriving. So let's go ahead and say that it's a three-day conference, which is a lot, but we'll go ahead and run it for those three days. And I'll hit continue. And then last, this is just how you're going to make your ad, um, which I'll go ahead and just leave in. Well, I'll just go ahead and change the name. We'll just say, I want it to say something like stop by our booth. And I'll have a, a picture that will show the Pentler team. So I'll just say Pentler team. So make sure that your ad is going to go to the right pages for Instagram and Facebook. And for here, I'll go ahead and just create a quick ad. So I'll just do an image. Go ahead and select this one. And usually with these kind of ads, I'm going to do something to inform attendees of important details, such as the booth location or the booth number. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put something like stop by booth number four and learn about how our digital marketing services can help your business grow. Make sure you always put a headline when it comes to an ad. There's so much real estate that you can use that you want to make sure you fill out all the details. So I'll just go ahead and put some sort of call to action here. Maybe like, you know, talk with us today, or maybe I'll just say meet the Pintler group team. And like I said, go ahead and put in a description. It could just be something really short, maybe a tagline about your business. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and put this. All right, and then last but not least, we'll go ahead and put make sure we have the right URL. So I'm going to go ahead, as I mentioned earlier, I want people to go to our website and I want them to look at the services pages. So I'm going to go ahead and stick that there. And your ad is all ready. So now I'll just go ahead and put this up for review. Make sure I get all the right information. We know we have the right target, location, we got the right ad scheduling, we want to go for impressions, and then we have a nice little call to action to have people come stop by our booth. 
So there you have it. Now you can use geofencing strategies to get smarter about reaching your audience. Whether you're a company with a booth at a trade show or you're managing ads for a client at a trade show, geofencing is a great way to reach a relevant audience and drive people to your brand. Thanks again for watching and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel.